We welcome you back to the Nissan pregame shift here in South Florida. We mentioned earlier a lot of conversation regarding what happens after tonight with Stanford head coach Jim Harbaugh. Michelle Tafoya has more. Michelle? Well, Mike, all week long, Jim Harbaugh has deflected talk about his future. While he has an offer to continue at Stanford, there are reports that Michigan is interested, along with the San Francisco 49ers and Denver Broncos. And it was confirmed to me earlier tonight that new Denver executive and Stanford alum John Elway is, of course, in town as an honorary captain for Stanford and does plan to talk to Harbaugh about the opening in Denver. But Harbaugh has been steadfast telling me before the game that for the moment, he is the head coach of Stanford. As for Virginia Tech, their head coach Frank Beamer told me last night that tonight's Orange Bowl ranks as one of the top three games in his program's history. Joining the 1995 Sugar Bowl when the Hokies came from behind to beat Texas and the January 3rd, 2000 game against number one Florida State for the national championship where Michael Vick had that amazing performance. Beamer said, Mike, that if they can beat Stanford tonight, this very highly ranked and high caliber team, it will elevate his program yet again. Time to get off the schneid. Time to be the top five team. That's what Beamer said to us last night. Steen is set for Virginia Tech and Stanford, and this has been the Nissan pregame shift. Virginia Tech has won the toss and defer the options as Stanford will receive and stop blinking. That is Virginia Tech in orange helmets. Something new. Haven't done it before. They busted out here for the bowl game tonight. Justin Meyer is the kickoff man for Virginia Tech. Part of their outstanding special teams. He has 30 touchbacks on the year. Whenever you have a Tech game, you have special teams to watch. Chris Sawusu back deep to receive for the Cardinal. Stanford played in the Sun Bowl last year. Virginia Tech won the Chick-fil-A Bowl in Atlanta, both in the BCS at the end of the 2010 season. Protect their regulars. They've been here three of the last four years. This is Stanford history. They've never played in the Discover Orange Bowl until now. And off we go from South Florida. Alusu from the goal line. The return to the 23 is brought down by Wiley Brown. So here he comes, the runner-up to Cam Newton for the 2010 Heisman Trophy, Andrew Luck, out of Houston, Texas, Offensive Player of the Year in the Pac-10. Well, he is an outstanding collegiate quarterback. He projects very well to the next level of football in the National Football League. Stanford runs a pro-style offense. They'll run the ball first, play action second, and spread the out third. Andrew Luck can be fun to watch tonight. Opening drive starts in the 24. Play action to Taylor with a fake. Luck was a very good runner on his own. 11 first down yards to the 35. He's run for 438 yards on the season. That's what Andrew Luck brings. He's run for over 400 yards. Stanford's second leading rusher. Just a naked bootleg. Coming to his left. His non-throwing shoulder. The route is well defended. Good decisiveness by Andrew Luck. Protect yourself. Nice work something he hasn't done enough of. He has uh, meted out a lot of big contact here during the season. Very physical runner. Out of Mansfield, Texas, the sophomore, Stephon Taylor, the running back. Plus first throw is to Taylor out of the backfield. He tackled the 40-yard line. The combination of Bruce Taylor and Rashad Carmichael. Looks into the issue for the rest of the Stanford offense. They score 40 a game. Taylor and Owen Marisic, great story, plays both ways, offense and defense. Doug Baldwin, 56 catches, leads this team. As for the guys up front, 126 combined starts. Chase Beeler, the center, first team All-American, all Pac-10, all with a 3-5-3 GPA to go with it. Second and six, Marisic 
trying to lead the way for the block, but Taylor is stopped behind the line of scrimmage by Jack Tyler, the sophomore out of Oakton, Virginia. Let's introduce you to this Hokie defense. Bud Foster, the coordinator, always does a good job. This group disappointed some early on. Stephen Friday, eight and a half sacks. Very good off the end with Graves, Hopkins, and Drager. Tyler just made the play. Bruce Taylor, second team, all ACC. Love their corners. Rashad Rock Carmichael. He likes being called Rock one corner. And all J. Ron Osley's done this year, eight picks. Number one in the football bowl subdivision. Third and eight, the pressure flushes luck. Throws on the run, incomplete, intended for Ryan Whalen. So one first down and then a punt for the Cardinals. Well, defensive coordinator Bud Foster doesn't wait long. He's going to bring everybody right up the middle in an all-out blitz, forcing Luck to take off. And as Bud Foster told us, Ron, most quarterbacks aren't as good when they got to run for their life. Good early down call by yeah, Virginia Tech. John, you're absolutely right. The pressure came. This offensive line for Stamper only giving up five sacks this season. But boy, the heavy blitz pressure forced Luck out of the pocket. That is David Green punting. He kicked a bit towards the end of the season. J. Ron Hosley will let it go. And it's a positive roll for the Hokies. It's only 32 on the kick. Virginia Tech's defense gets the job done early on. It's Taylor and company with a good play. Discover Orange Bowl. We welcome you back. Tyron Taylor and the Virginia Tech Hokies very familiar here. It's ACC Champs third time in four years. And here's Taylor playing his final game for Virginia Tech tonight. He can do it all, Mike. Running, passing, very experienced in this system. You'll see a lot of different sets, a lot of looks tonight from this Hokie offense. Their opening drive started at 31, and Darren Evans, the junior out of Indianapolis, is the back to get it going. And the quick toss, the bubble to Danny Cole, who slides down after a game of nearly four yards. I mentioned Evans is back there. Ryan Williams will be joining him. He has a hamstring injury. We will see him in all likelihood during the game here tonight. Jarrett Boykin leads the team with 48 catches. We just saw Cole's 33rd of the season. And this group up front, team starting five all year. Lanier, Gosell, Bo Warren. Dad, Don, played in the NFL. And the two guys on the right side, Brooks and DeChristopher, both Second team all ACC. This is Evans. Got a yard. That's it. Not the more chase. Thomas over there with Owen Marisic. The starting fullback is also a linebacker. In front of them, led in the middle by Sione Pua. Second team all Pac 10. If Thomas with seven and a half sacks, Marisic and Stove. Kaiser. Very good linebacking for him. In the secondary, you want to watch Richard Sherman. He's a great story. Part of that 1 and 11 season four years ago. Four picks and a big part of the turnaround for the Cardinals in 2010. Taylor adjusts the play on third and six. Nowhere to go. Throw sideline. It's caught. It'll be a yard or two shy of the first down as Danny Cole got it. Well, defensive coordinator Vic Fangio so, shows some of those NFL roots, Ron. Three down, nickel package. You're going to see pressure coming from the field now, and Tyrod Taylor is going to see it. He's going to audible to try to pick it up, and Virginia Tech does a good job. Tyrod scrambles around, finds a completion, but both defensive coordinators early blitzes on third down tonight. But excellent discipline by the Stanford pass rush. They compressed the pocket, did not allow Taylor to get outside. Whistles before the punt by Brian Saunders, second team all ACC. I think we had a false start. Offense number 33, five yard penalty, repeat fourth down. Tom Walker's our referee. Big 12 conference officials will this discover Orange Bowl tonight. Frank Beamer not happy. You know, Beamer ball is great special teams play out of practice on Saturday. They spent an hour working on special teams. I mean, they really, really focus on their teams. They've been effective throughout Frank Beamer's career. Big five 
Josh Saunders, 41 yards. Terrell on the run down to the 26. Almost had a chance to break it. Brought down just shy of midfield by Martin Scales. 41 on the kick. A nice 25-yard return gives Andrew Luck and the Cardinal the ball near midfield. And our aerial coverage tonight is brought to you by Goodyear. Second drive for the Cardinal. Great field position taken over at their own 49. Thousand yard back, Stephon Taylor remains the running back. Luck off the hard count. Up with downfield, Luck looking to take off. And barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. So you see this Virginia Tech defense, Stephen Friday, left the charge early on. And Jaws, it's an intriguing matchup. Stanford, one of the top 10 teams in scoring in college football this year. Virginia Tech's defense, top 15 as usual under Bud Foster. And they have a couple outstanding corners. You look at J. Ron Hosley, eight interceptions, number one in the nation. Rock Carmichael, 4.2640 speed at the other corner. I expect to see Stanford attack with Chris Arusa, Doug Walden, and Ryan Whalen working those outside routes and those isolation combinations. That was officially credited as a sack because it was a loss of a yard. Second and 11, and Luck throws complete one of his three tight ends he uses, Kobe Fleener, the senior out of Lamont, Illinois, outside of Chicago. That's what I like about this offense at Stanford. They use everybody. They throw it to tight ends, backs, receivers. If you got a helmet on, there's a good chance you're going to see the football, but just a quick stick route, and the ball's well thrown and on time by Luck. This is a man-to-man -man situation now for this Virginia Tech Hokie defense. When they get inside a third down and five, defensive coordinator Bud Foster loves to play press coverage with these talented corners. Now this is an excellent offense. Stanford on third down, one of the best in the nation. Just off in time. Luck has time. Throwing sideline. Ball's incomplete, intended for Doug Baldwin, Rock Carmichael there with him, every step of the way. No place to throw. Well, you'll see this throw right at the very end. You see Baldwin go up and try to make the grab. Good coverage by Rock Carmichael, deep down the field. That's it's very nuts. good defense by Virginia Tech. Holding Stanford on third down these first two third downs in this football game. This is the number one third down offense in the country. Good get off by the Hokies. 58 percent is a ridiculous number. That's the way they've done it on third down this year. David Green, the junior out of Mission Viejo, kicks again. And Virginia Tech was ready for it. T.K. Amajoy is a terrific special teamer for Stanford, and they tried the short snap to Amajoy, but Antoine Hopkins was having nothing of it. They can't out Beamer ball, Beamer ball, and Virginia Tech gets good field position. That's why you practice special teams. Renowned for kick returns and blocks, Frank Beamer's special teams have been extraordinary over his near quarter century at Virginia Tech. On this play, well, there's Chris Greger starting defensive end. He just reads it, closes, and makes the tackle. These Hokies are ready to roll on special teams. Every film I've picked up for the last 20 years. Yeah, that was outstanding discipline right there by Chris Drager. And Drager and Antoine Hopkins, two starters on defense. They have punt safe situation, make the play. Now Virginia Tech takes over at the 45. Second series for Tyrod Taylor. First carry, Darren Evans. They gain a couple of yards. Darren Evans, Ryan Williams, David Wilson is suspended for the first quarter for violating team curfew. Part of a great running attack and a Virginia Tech offense, John, that is top 20 in scoring in the country. How about that? Two very good receivers. And don't forget, this quarterback, he can fake it to one of these backs and run it himself. They have a lot of talent in the backfield. And it'll be Evans for this series. You'll see Williams as long as his hamstring is ready to go in the next series. Corner blitz coming, Taylor throwing for Jared Boykin incomplete. Step for step with the Johnson, about a most speed. It'll be third down coming up. 
Hey, Jaws, give me your read on Tyrod Taylor. As you watched him, as you prepare for this game, what kind of quarterback did you see? Well, I see a guy that can throw the football. You know, when, when you first look at the tape, you see the offense, they run, and, you know, they're going to pound the football. They're going to spread it out. They're going to use Taylor's mobility. Got the practice. You watch this guy throw the football. He can, he can really spin it now. You know, people talk about you run this kind of offense at the collegiate level and you project to the NFL. I'll tell you this right now, Tyrod Taylor can throw the football at any level. So Ryan Williams next to him, first time. For a great season as a freshman. Taylor sliding in a tight space for Boykin. Incomplete. Stanford's defense everywhere. Oh, he's opening two series. Well, it's one of those funnel screens on the perimeter to the receivers. Take a look at the blitz coming off the left side. Stanford covers it. So far, both defenses are ready to go against these talented offenses, and keep an eye on these two quarterbacks. They're not used to these slow starts. The former walk-on who got a scholarship in August, Brian Saunders, going to kick it away again. Not a lot of hang time. Gave Terrell a nice opportunity to return. On a prior punt. Their catch of a 40-yard kick, and Stanford will take over at its own 13. For well, the bowl season rolling all through the week, leading to next Monday's championship game. On Thursday night, you can see Dwight Dasher in Middle Tennessee take on the champions of the MAC, Miami, in the GoDaddy.com Bowl. It's ESPN, ESPN Radio, ESPN3.com, and on your phone as well. Thursday night, 8 Eastern time for the GoDaddy.com Bowl. Miami of Ohio just hiring Don Treadwell to be their head coach going into next season. He did a great job. Mark D'Antonio's staff at Michigan State. Only one first down in the game on Stanford's opening drive. This is their third. This is Stephon Taylor to the 18-yard line. 210 carries for him this year. Became the sixth back in Stanford history to run for over a thousand yards and the first sophomore to do it since Darren Nelson who's here tonight Saw yes. him on the field Before and the he game. can catch the football as well Mike I think Stanford is loaded in the backfield you're going to see a young back Anthony Wilkerson number 32 who really came on in the latter part of the season as well Stanford's deep at all the skill positions this is the down where Virginia Tech likes to blitz I wouldn't be surprised to see a screen pass here from Stanford There is the screen draws on cue. There is Taylor. Just had a fight to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yvonne Morgan made the tackle. Well, when you bring the pressure, you get a chance to get your running back out in space. Luck does a good job with the play fake, sets up the screen. When you want to get a running back out of space like Wilkerson, can make people miss. Excuse me, Taylor, make people miss. Get this into a manageable third down situation. I like Moore, the second leading tackler on this Virginia Tech team, also had five picks for Bud Foster's defense this year. And this Virginia Tech defense is a check with me defense. Look at all the hand signals as they identify these cardinal formations. To Devon Morgan calling him off, going to a second defense, trying to give Luck a different look. Luck's throw is complete to Doug Baldwin, who has room down the sideline as a first down. Just shy of a 40. Eight of 20. Well, Virginia Tech checked into his zone coverage and watch the pass protection as Andrew Luck gets his snap. You're going to see excellent pass protection against the inside blitz. Good pickup by Taylor. And there's where Luck shows his polish. Good job finding an alternate receiver. When he had 359 yards, takes it all the way. It's the power play off the left side. It's a bad run fit by Tech, by the Tech Hokies. And that has plagued them all year. 
That's why they're 59th in the nation against the run, and uncharacteristically, they've given up a lot of big runs this year. Not good. Nate Whitaker knocks in the extra point. Stanford is on the board first out of Baton Rouge for Louisiana. An injury played career on the farm. Jeremy Stewart, big moment in the Discover Arts Bowl. Stewart had 13 carries all year. Five of them came in the first game against Sacramento State. Andrew Luck turned and gave it to the senior back at a Catholic high school in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for his fifth career Stanford touchdown. And the Cardinal, as you guys mentioned, uh, the latest team to put up a big run on Bud Foster's defense. And he's lighting them up over there on the sideline. 7-0 Stanford lead. The game's first big play knocked up by the Cardinal and Stewart. John takes us back to the touchdown. Well, David DeCastro at right guard, the all Pac-10 performer, but look at all the beef on the left side. The Cardinal will use six offensive linemen a lot. That's Conrad Rulin coming in motion. There's DeCastro, an old-fashioned power play. And how about the bevy of backs that Stanford has? That's Jeremy Stewart. He finds an open uh, lane, and he hits it. Great execution. Guy who was limited through the last part of the season because of those various ailments. Ryan Williams, he's coming back from a hamstring injury. And Shane Scove makes the tackle loss of one. Shane Scove, the Stanford Cardinal. They're a little salty. Not one of these defenders was picked as a first team all Pac 10 performer. I think they want to prove to America they're pretty good on defense as well. They're a top 20 club in a lot of categories. They got a lot of pride in what they're doing on defense as well. Yeah, well, big fans who came here and proved them, John, from 90th to 22nd. That's a great improvement on the defensive side in that 3 4 scheme. There's been no game. Second and 10. Taylor is shot down the sideline for Danny Cole. Just a step away. Well, he just missed Danny Cole that time. Cole's averaged over 20 yards a catch the last two years, and that's one tie Rod wants back. That's one if you put a little air on this throw and let Cole run into it. You'll see he goes to the outside. Now he finds that seam right up the alley. Had a chance on the sideline, just barely overthrown by Tyrod Taylor. That's one at the end of the day, the quarterback says, I can't have that. You don't want to be in third down and long against Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator with this Stanford defense. Vic, 24 years of NFL experience, knows how to get after the quarterback. Make a big deal of how much luck does at the line. Taylor does as well. We'll bring five, and Tyron hangs in there and completes it to Jared Boykin. Nice throw to the junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, for a first down. And Jared Boykin has big hands, but nice blitz pick up by this Virginia Tech Hokie offense. Pressure's going to be coming off the right side, and the Hokies handle it. Good poise in the pocket, and that's a strike by Tyrod Taylor. And Boykin, he's closing in on a lot of receiving records here for these Virginia Tech Hokies. Big first down. 6'2", 215, Blake a big target, John. After the game's first first down for the Hokies. Just a couple of yards for Ryan Williams. Not able to get any run game going right now, Virginia Tech. Let's give you a little background on Tyrod Taylor out of Hampton, Virginia. Grew up in that Hampton Roads area, idolizing Michael Vick. 34-7 and seven as a starter. Most wins in school history and setting the all-time leading passing marks for the Hokies. The young man who likes to stay out in the spotlight. He's alone in his apartment on campus. Doesn't eat red meat. Very calm, great demeanor. He showed wonderful leadership after the ONC start this year. Heating up here with pressure. Nowhere to go, and he's brought down by the guy who starts at fullback as well, Owen Marisic. Yep. Owen Marisic, number 48, the starting fullback, the starting linebacker, plays 110 plays a game. Just like concrete, Chuck McNair comes through and makes the play. 
This is an outstanding play, unblocked, but the scheme wins. Marisa gets in and takes down Tyrod Taylor, who normally escapes a lot of those individual tackles in the open field. And well, he's got to be able to throw the ball away in that situation to keep him out of these third and possible. Cardinals just run three. They drop eight. Taylor keeps the play alive. Up the middle, Taylor. Only about four yards shy of the first down. Marisa can scaffold make the tackle. And you give Tyrod Taylor a 14 yard yeah, gain yeah. on that. That's all on Tyrod Taylor. Just watch this and enjoy this ability. <laughs> he almost gets this done. The three man rush. <laughs> With a spy as well. Scove on the spy. He wasn't going to get Taylor on that play. He's a great competitor. Looking at the, uh, the hit that Marisic got on Taylor. May have bloodied up Tyrod a bit. Brian Saunders kicking. Farrell catches it back inside his five. Not usually advisable. Taken down at three, Alonzo Tweedy, part of a great coverage team for the Hokies, on the stop. Oh, we showed you the sack that he had. Earlier he had a block on that touchdown run. Owen Maurice, one of the great stories in college football the last couple of years, playing both ways, fullback and linebacker, and on back-to-back -back snaps, a touchdown run against Notre Dame, then after the kickoff, Maurice had the interception of the Dame first pass, 20 yards for a touchdown. Part of Stanford's win in South Bend, the first time they've done that since 92. Oh, Maurice plays both ways, said he has to keep himself hydrated, get his sleep, get his rest to be ready for the call of the number of plays. It's now his 15th play out of the 24 tonight. In the way for Stephon Taylor with no game. Josh, you talk about Chuck McNarrick, really the last recognized player at a high level to play offense and defense. Of course, at Holy Cross, Gordy Lockbaum did it in the mid-80s. Yeah, but there were guys like that. You know, you look at Charles Woodson, they played some wide receivers, some secondary play. When you look at where Maurice Marisic is playing, he's playing a linebacker and fullback. These are collision areas of the football field. Not only you know, does he have to worry about hydrating throughout the day, he has to learn offense, defense, carry two playbooks around in complex and sophisticated offensive and defensive schemes. What a player. He comes back to block the Taylor. He cannot get back. But to the line of scrimmage, John Graves. Red shirt senior out of Richmond, Virginia. Second team all conference with the tackle. And this is an important get off right here for this Hokie defense. After getting gashed by the long run, that's two real good run fits by this Hokie defense. And now on third and long, you have the chance to get after Andrew Luck deep in his own territory. But Foster sent on Kyle Fuller, so nickel, five DBs in there for Virginia Tech. You're going to get those isolation routes to your outside wide receivers here. See if Luck can find them. Look where he's pressured. In trouble, got rid of it. It was deflected, and that's caught in the end zone by a lineman who's an ineligible receiver. But the ball was batted, so that ineligible receiver flag wouldn't apply there. It was Antoine Hopkins who deflected it. Illegal touching. It should be a safety. There is no foul for illegal touching. The ball was tipped. The result of the play is a completed pass in the end zone. Mm -hmm. Safety. That's right. I don't think I've ever seen that. They blitz. They get after Andrew Luck. And the pressure forces the ball to be tipped under duress. And watch this. Right off the ricochet, <laughs> there's Derek Hall, the first-year starter at right tackle. Making an instinctive play. You'd like to see him bat it down, obviously. Stephen Friday coming of his right defensive end position. Good pressure on Luck. He forced Luck to step up. Batted ball. Safety. In replay, they may have looked at that to see if his knee was down when he threw, but it would be a safety anyway. So just depends how you define the safety of the two points. So on the deflection by Hopkins. 
And that's what Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator of Virginia Tech, has been going through all year. There have been spurts of great defense. There have been some lapses and some big plays. But nice comeback here by these Hokie defenders and making a big play. You see John Graves was the one in there with a hand on luck. Would have been very close if it was a safety or not. And that would have mattered if Hall didn't catch it and that was just complete replay. He's a, he's a poor offensive lineman. He's back nine yards in the end zone. He's never been back there before. It's nice of them to <laughs> save us a replay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, move this thing anyway. along. <laughs> Let's see if Tyrod Taylor can get this Hokie offense started. Nate Whitaker is going to operate the free kick with the kickoff team from the 20. And Hosley comes back to get it. Jaron Hosley looking for some space and he's tracked down. Nice job by Jarek Lancaster, the linebacker, to make the play. Why don't we take a look at tonight's Taco Bell touchdown spotlight? Stanford early on, couple three and outs. And then hit the one big play with Jeremy Stewart. De Castro leading the way. Marisic, the other block on that side for. The youngster out of Baton Rouge, the senior. Take it all the way for a touchdown, a year that's been marred by injury for Stewart. It's the only score for Stanford. Virginia Tech scored on that safety. Now they get the ball at 25. Need to get Taylor outside the pocket a little bit. Tyrod's going to take it there with his feet. 21 first down yards. Tyrod Taylor out of bounds. Just past the 46 yard line. That was hard to defend this guy. It's bump and run man to man. Nobody's open. And Tyrod Taylor doesn't need much room. He makes another Cardinal defender miss and he has tremendous acceleration. That was Vic Fanzio's biggest concern, trying to contain this guy's improvisational skills. He's got rare skill when the ball's in his hand. It's all about discipline that pass rush. Do not give this quarterback a lane. Darren Evans is the back. Taylor did a nice job with a high center snap. Gave that three yards. Shane Stone's the tackle that'll bring the first quarter to an end. Other than that Taylor run, there hasn't been much for Virginia Tech. In their running game, it carries 32 yards thus far. Two very underrated defenses. Both of these squads came in here averaging less than 20 points a game, and they're ready on defense, that's for sure. Yeah, good point. Head of the marquee talks about the quarterbacks. They have tough opponents tonight in each defense. Stewart, the only touchdown. 7-2 Stanford after one. Discover Orange Bowl 2011 edition, Act 3 of the Bowl Championship Series. By Tarigo, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski, Michelle Tafoy on the sideline. 7 2 the Cardinal of Stanford with the ACC champion Virginia Tech Hokies as the second quarter begins. Get in there. Looks off the X. Scoles was knocked down, and Marcus Davis is a first down. 39, Batamosi made the tackle. And a pickup by this Virginia Tech Hokie offense. Short corner blitz. You're going to see it come right off your left side. Well done by Lanier, the left tackle. Andrew Lanier, that left tackle, John, along with Greg Nosal, the left guard, and Bo Warren, the center. All high school tight ends who've been converted. Part of a bit of the philosophy of Frank Beamer building offensive linemen. First quarter's over, so the suspension to sophomore David Wilson, number four, is done. He's to the right of Taylor. Here's the mess fake. And now Darren Evans on the option to the 30. Gain of nine. Have a sports center right now for you. And here's Steve Levy. This is Steve Levy. Sports Center right now is presented by Discover. Eric Mangini relieved of his duties as head coach of the Browns today. Mike Holmgren would not rule out coaching again. And the Vikings and Leslie Frazier reached an agreement that will remove the interim tag from Frazier's title. Under him, the Vikes finished three and three. Sports Center after the Orange Bowl. Thank you, Steve. Second and one for the Hokies, right around the 30. And a flag. I'm hoping to get it to Wilson speeding around that left side. Ball start. Offense number 62. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Right tackle Blake to Christopher. You know, this offensive coordinator, Brian Steinspring, he doesn't get a lot of credit. Most people talk about Beamer ball, but 
They have a lot of offense. Look at this, a split back dive option out of the shotgun, and you got Tyrod Taylor faking the ball to Wilson and pitching the ball to Evans. They have so much offense, I really have no idea how Stanford prepared for this drive. Drive makes it second and six, more pressure. Evans picked that up with the pass for Andre Smith was incomplete. The Stanford's really starting to heat up Virginia Tech here. Yeah, they're bringing a blitz on about one out of every three snaps, Mike. You know, Vic Fangio again, he comes to that 3-4 scheme, bring those linebackers, bring pressure on the quarterback. But the one thing I like about this Virginia Tech offense, John spoke to him a moment ago, the quarterback Tyrod Taylor does a lot at the line of scrimmage. He'll audible, he'll move protection, he'll have to kill, and then that third phase of getting to a whole new play. He's doing it right here. He saw something he likes nice and juicy against that Stanford defense. And Stowe, his pressure is picked up. Taylor's passing complete. Jared Poikin wants it and gets a flag. Yeah, they got Richard Sherman, the left corner of the Cardinal there. Pass interference on the defense, number three. First down, the spot of the foul. Stanford continues to blitz and challenge these hokey receivers. Here's Sherman in bump and run coverage. He and Boykin going at it. I see hands. I can see that, Ron. I think it's the toughest call on any That's level right. of football. <laughs> College football, pro football, still the toughest call to make is passing. Well, you're out there in space on an island. Everyone's pushing, shoving. They said, they said Michael Thomas, number three, was the player fouled. Or committed the foul. Sherman was throwing his hands on the receiver. Evans runs left. Maurice waiting for him at the 24-yard line. You know, the one thing Vic Fangio told us, if these big backs move the pile against us, we're in trouble. But how about that gang tackling by the Stanford Cardinal? You don't think that he drove this point home. Look at Evans and Maurice square in the hole. And let's just see how many yardage after contacts there. For Evans tonight not much good effort collectively by this Stanford defense well low pad wins right there and you see Marisa just stones I'll carry in the hole awesome Taylor second down throw complete to Danny Cole at the 10-yard line a first down, first and goal for the Hokies, a game of 13. This is outstanding by Tyrod Taylor. He sees the zone coverage from the Stanford Cardinal. Good focus down for him. Now he sees the void and pulls the trigger and throws a strike to Danny Cole. Well, you get that soft zone down there. A quarterback with the experience of Tyrod Taylor is going to find it and swing it in there. Well, that's some good arm strength for that young man. And what doesn't show in those stats is the poise against the pressure that Stanford has brought. Inside the 10, so it's first and goal. The power back, Evans, was the MVP of the Discover Orange Bowl a couple of years ago, 09, against Cincinnati. Missed all of 09 after tearing his ACL in the preseason. That after a phenomenal prior year where he set an ACC freshman record, 1,285 yards. Back this year, the team leader in rushing yards. And they love sticking the ball off the right side behind right back of Lake to Christopher. And they have a big tight end here, Andre Smith. Keep an eye on number 88. Andre Smith as the night unfolds. They love him in the red zone. Five touchdowns in this area. I like moving the pocket here, Coach. Get this quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, out in space. Giving Evans, waiting his score, Shane score. We found the sophomore out of Piedmont, California a couple of times. Top tackler on this team. Spiritual leader of the defense. Also leads him in bringing the other guys down. Yeah, it's a wasted play here. They are going to hand the ball right here to Evans. There's nowhere to go. Stanford is loading the box on these early downs, and they are daring Tyrod to let it rip. Back-to-back one-yard losses. David Wilson's the back. Taylor drifting, looking for space to run. 
Now he's in trouble. Stayed alive somehow and throws to the end zone. Touchdown! What a play! David Wilson! And what a job by Taylor to keep it alive! At the sideline, he looks like a whirling dervish. Spins around. Fires to the end zone. Like I said a moment ago, John, get this guy out of space. We just had Michael <laughs> Vick a few weeks ago. Yeah. Now he gets Starship 5 right here. Yeah. Uh, Watch this. It. Marisek has him dead in the water. He reverses his field. <laughs> Great sideline awareness. And you don't think these Virginia Tech Hokie receivers are good at the scramble drill, do you? That's a running back right there. How about the all-purpose skill of David Wilson, number four? Well, that's all good. Taylor stayed in bounds. The knee was down for Wilson. The extra point is added by Hazley. Tyrod Taylor's put up a lot of highlights in his days in Blacksburg. That one's right up there at the top. What a play by Taylor. One week from tonight in Glendale, the game for it all, the national championship, the Tostitos BCS national championship game. Cam Newton, the Heisman winner, Auburn, taking on Oregon's terrific offense, the dynamic back, for Michael James. You know his numbers during the year, and Cam Newton's Heisman totals on the right there. One week from right about now in Glendale, Arizona, 8 Eastern, the coverage, ESPN Radio. John and I will have the game there, ESPN3.com, ESPN3D, on your phone, so wherever you are, the Tostitos BCS National Championship game will be there. Oregon arrived yesterday in Glendale. The Auburn Tigers touching down today. 9-7 after the electric performance by Taylor. Returned by Chris Owusu. Seeking space. Nowhere to go with Owusu. Martin Scales made the tackle. Let's take a look at tonight's good hands play. Brought to you by Allstate. Tyron Taylor's feet set it up. And the great hands belong to Wilson on the catch, keeping the play alive. David Wilson holds it all the way through the catch and punch Jim Harbaugh there in the side. They say Taylor's out of bounds. And the replay, look at it and get a good peek here as Marisic was checking on him at the sideline there, able to keep the feet in bounds. That can frustrate you. Well, Taylor was throwing the ball to Boykin. Wilson gets the TD. Now Andrew Luck tries to respond. He throws, and it's a good hands held on to there by Zach Ertz, the tight end at 35. Then did you guys see the post play as watching Tyrod Taylor? And Jimmy Harbaugh was trying to tell him, you were out of, he, was I in bounds? No, you were out of bounds. <laughs> you were out of bounds. <laughs> he wasn't. The replay booth confirmed because they look at every play and only stop it when they need to. I could read lips too, John. That amazing play. Taylor for five yards here as he's tackled by Chris Drager, the defensive end, John. A lot of up-tempo right now. Stanford has Virginia Tech off balance with this heavy personnel group, and they know it. Taking five, go right back to Taylor. Got about three yards. These aren't softball runs that Stanford's running. Two tight ends, two backs. Oftentimes, they have six offensive linemen. They make no confusion to anyone and what their intentions are, Ron. They're going to slam it at you, and they're going to like doing it. This is an offensive line together have 126 career starts. They knew, they know what they're doing up front at Stanford. Time out from the sideline. Stanford. First charge now. So the Cardinal will stop it before third and two. It's about a third of the way through this Discover Orange Bowl. This is the 77th Orange Bowl. The 1984 one comes to mind for so many. Miami beating previously undefeated Nebraska 31 to 30. Howard Schnellenberger, Bernie Kozar, and the Canes getting it. And a two-point conversion was tipped away. Ken Calhoun, the safety, who made that play. Out of the Stanford call timeout, 32. Luck will throw, and they will convert the first down with Conrad Rulin, the senior tight end out of Mission Viejo. 
Mike, this is a high volume offense that they run at Stanford. Well, a lot of different formations, a lot of different personnel packages. And you got a quarterback like Andrew Luck who can run this kind of offense. That's good to touchdown, Jeremy Stewart back in the game. Behind the fullback, Owen Marisa. Check moving around on defense. Stewart. Last carry went all the way home. How about this one? Pretty good yard for carry average. Takes it inside the 30. Now look what they're doing. They start in a no-back set. You gotta be a smart football player. Watch, they shift back into a two-back set. It's an unbalanced line, and they're gonna run the ball to the left side. But the shift is what caught the Hokies off balance right there. You have got to be ready for some pre-snap movement in this offense. 43-yard average on those two carries for Stewart. They're got a great block. Almost taking it out the distance. David DeCastro flattened his guy. Well, we talked about that high volume. You'll see it here. You get the play call from the sideline as Andrew Luck looks at Jim Harbaugh. Now you see the signal coming in. Now. Look, he's got to look at Chase Beeler, the center. He's got a play-calling wristband on as well. Luck has one, but they have so many plays, 350 of them. The offensive lineman is wearing a wristband with plays on him. That's complex and sophisticated, John. <laughs> Wild <laughs> <Luck> formation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Anthony Wilkerson, the freshman out of Foothill Ranch, California, takes that spot. And the Hokies saw him, and, and they knew what was coming. You know, this is John Graves right here, this defensive tackle, defensive end for the Hokies. He's the only returning starter from last year. What a pursuit play he made right there, chasing down the young back out of the Wildcat formation. There you see, Graves, there. There you see once again, Luck looking at uh, Chase Beeler's Chase Beeler's wristband. They're probably up to about number 300 right about now. I know some centers that wouldn't go for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sophomore Tyler Gaffney's checked in, top of the screen for the Cardinal, third and eight. Virginia Tech going to rush four. Luck going to find the opening for the touchdown. Zach Ertz, the redshirt freshman tight end. Well, David Shaw told me of the Cardinal, one of the assistant coaches, that Zach Ertz is a young Todd Heat. Highly recruited kid. They were thrilled to get him. And he is a red zone beast. A little nod to the outside. And he beats Morgan easy. How about that throw? Yeah, but check out Andrew Luck right here. You see the poise in the pocket, the pressure on, the delivery right on the numbers. That seam throw, beating that safety, getting over the top. That's really, really good execution. Whitaker deflected extra point is no good, so the Hokies who block a kick every 2.3 games come up with a block extra point, and the lead is four. Andre Smith blocks the extra point. Another tight end gets the touchdown. Zach Ertz, Stanford. Andrew Luck, the quarterback for Stanford. His dad, Oliver, who played in the NFL, Houston, and of course at West Virginia as well. He's the athletic director currently in Morgantown. He went up against the Hokies during his day, 2-1 and one, as the West Virginia quarterback against Virginia Tech. And his son getting a crack at him, the guy who the analysts believe would be the number one overall pick in the draft. He chooses to come out. Still has eligibility remaining after tonight. Or the 25-yard line with Sharp Truck Carmichael on the return. Time now for the view from our DirecTV alternate picture cam showing the block extra point. Cut the bodies getting in there for the Hokies. Andre Smith and John Graves. And uh, you prepare for it, prepare for it. Jim Harbaugh's team did not want to give up that block kick, but as you said, Jaws, it's not by accident. There's a lot of time spent by Frank Beamer's group on special teams. Well, year in and year out, uh, we've seen it historically from Frank Beamer, Beamer Ball. They make plays on special teams. You know, every one, excuse me, 2.3 games, Johnny loved those numbers, I know that, they block a kick. 
That's outstanding execution by your special teams. I was out there at practice. They're doing punt block live on Saturday. They get after it. And it's not a soft special teams group, and they spend a lot of time on all the little nuance of being successful on special teams. Jarek Lancaster, linebacker for Stanford, out there on coverage of that kickoff, was injured, helped off with the training staff. Taylor and the Hokies in the 25. Nobody open, so out of the pocket, he just gets rid of it. And incomplete. Stanford leading Virginia Tech 13-9 here in this Discover Orange Bowl. When you go into the bowl season, obviously you have the Tostitos PCS title game. But other than that, quarterback matchups, this one with a lot of appeal. Two very complete quarterbacks. We talk about Lux throwing, but he runs it very well. Taylor's elusiveness, but he throws it very well. Two very complete guys in different systems. More importantly, Mike, but I really enjoyed meeting with those guys. They were outstanding young men. David Wilson carries to the right, gets two yards. Shane Scove with the tackle. You know, Marisa gets a lot of attention here, and he should, but this guy, Shane Scove, he's a leading tackler here at Stanford. He's just a young guy warming up. He's got a bright future. What's he got on his face there? That looks like a lot of war paint right there on Shane Scove. Little John Randall look, man. He's ready to rock. Got 72 tackles, four and a half sacks. Lights it down there in the briar patch, as you say, John. Six defensive backs, two linebackers. You're going to get a three-man rush. Looks like a lot of coverage here. Third and eight. Pressure picked up. Taylor's pass. Stove with the coverage. It's incomplete. Virginia Tech side looking for a flag, and they'll get one. Good disguise, and it is a blitz off the right side. But take a look at Scove right here. How can this not be pass interference, Jaws? Well, let's see it. I agree with you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what angle they're yeah. watching it from, hey. but that's pass interference. Ball is in the air. Scove just takes a shot at Fuller. No call. Tough kid right there. Ooh. Scared me. Brian Saunders to kick now. Returnable, 42 yards. Burrell took the first contact. And then he's brought down by Alonzo Tweedy. It's a second special teams tackle for Tweedy. Four-point lead for the Cardinal out of the Pac-10. Tomorrow night, down New Orleans way, Ohio State and Arkansas. Great quarterback matchup there with Terrell Pryor. And Ryan Mowen, it's the All-State Sugar Bowl. 8 Eastern, the coverage begins on ESPN. Buckeyes, a uh, regular in the BCS Bowls. Of course, the suspension story with Pryor and the other players for their illegal benefits. However, they will be playing, and their five-game suspensions will come up when next season starts. All-State Sugar Bowl tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, ESPN. Of course, ESPN Radio. For those of you on the West Coast, on your way home tomorrow night. Anthony Wilkerson's the back. There goes the freshman. Nowhere to go. Bruce Taylor, the tackle. Mike, you said a lot of analysts had Andrew Luck projected as the number one player in the draft. I guess I would be one of those analysts if he decides to come out. You see the ability to extend the play. I love the progression. Left, middle, right. Excellent pass protection. Get the ball out. And how about this stroke on the touchdown? Steps up in the pocket. Delivers the strike for the touchdown. Beautifully done by Andrew Luck. He has all the tools and great leadership skills. Been a long line of great quarterbacks on the farm in Palo Alto. Luck, the latest. Second and nine. His throw is intercepted. Dayron Hosley leads the nation in INTs. Has a knife. Yeah, well. You better be careful when you throw the ball to the field against Virginia Tech. You're throwing against one of the top corners I've seen in college football. J. Ron Hosley just gloves his ninth interception. I don't care who you're talking about at quarterback. When you throw the ball to the field, you're going to see number 20 over there. And the coverage is outstanding against Waylon. You can't play it any better right there, Ron. Delray Beach, first year as a starter, outstanding return man. This guy right here, 
is going to carry the torch. They've had a lot of great corners at Tech. He's a lockdown corner. This was intended for Ryan Well, and there goes Darren Evans. If not for that tackle by Taylor Stoffel, who may have gone all the way. Hosley was looking forward to this game. He said, I just hope I get some opportunities out there. A lot of people shy away from number 20 for a good reason. Same school as Flowers, Brandon Flowers, the outstanding young corner of the Kansas City Chiefs in Delray Beach. Flowers, two-time All-American. They've had many good corners over this uh, Bud Foster defense the last couple of decades. Using the speed of Wilson to the edge. Only gains a yard. We've got a Sports Center right now update with Scott Van Pelt. Good evening, I'm Scott Van Pelt, Sports Center right now, presented by Discover. LeBron James goes for 38, Dwayne Wade 31. The Heat beat the Bobcats by 14. They've won 11 straight on the road. Meanwhile, in Cleveland, Eric Mangini is out. Mike Holmgren would not rule out the possibility that he could be the successor. Steve Levy, you and me for Sports Center after the Orange Bowl in Miami. All right, SVP, thank you. Three and a half left in the half. Virginia Tech trying to take the lead. Taylor already one highlight play tonight. The incomplete is tight end Andre Smith didn't know he was going for him. Got this, to throttle down. This Gove, he's a football player. He doesn't come off the field. What an outstanding young player. You're going to see Scove. He's going to play against Andre Smith, the big tight end on a little wheel route out of the backfield. That's what you call good coverage. But this Scove, he'll smack you between the tackles. He can cover you. He's just a young guy getting started. John, I love the discipline of the Stanford defense. They know that Taylor can hurt you on the perimeter, get him to the edge. They are playing with discipline. Here's how that radar defense, no one down in the stance, and here they come. Taylor throws, caught, yard shy of the first down, but a better field goal opportunity if they choose to kick. Andre Smith the catch. It's that big tight end I like. Really come on. Six foot five, almost 280 pounds. Good pickup by Tech. Good anticipation. Coach Beamer's going for it. The center's big people at a tight end in Eric Martin. Kenny Younger, the redshirt senior fullback out of Richmond, comes in. Aaron Stevens, number 99 from Stanford, checks in. Taylor, fourth and one, gives to Evans. Stop! Wow. What a surge by the Stanford defensive line. Matt Masafilo over there, the junior, with the tackle to force it over on downs back to the Cardinal. Masafilo, just an outstanding play, but it was penetration by the entire defensive line from Stanford. You'll see him hit the gap, get to the outside, shed the tackler, shed the blocker, and make the tackler. Evans go down. I don't know if Evans stretched that to the outside on his own, but it looked like the play was designed to go up inside. And obviously, Frank Beamer not happy there. Nice play by Masafilo, honorable mention, all Pac-10 out of Hawaii. So Andrew Lucky for an interception on the last possession, gets it back. Starts his drive with a 13-yard completion to Doug Baldwin. Down here in Florida, out of Gulf Breeze, top receiver this year. You know, Virginia Tech has been playing one-on-one -on -one in the outside with inside technique. These are easy completions. Easy to get easily completed against Hosley playing to the inside. Take advantage of those one-on-ones. I feel see more of that from Andrew Luck working the perimeter. Going right back at Hosley. From the 42. Luck throws. Dropped by Will. Incomplete. Ryan, the captain, couldn't hold on to as he came down to the ground. Well, Stephon Taylor came across the formation and picked up the blitz. All thrown behind Wayland. Would have been a tough catch, but I expect Wayland to make that catch. 
Well, you can see Rock Carmichael driving that route, and I believe Luck threw it a little bit back shoulder, hoping that William would settle down into that little void. Stephon Taylor, the inside run, and Bruce Taylor and Jack Tyler, those uh, backers on the inside of done a really nice job in plugging up the Stanford run game tonight. They sure have, and they moved Bruce Taylor to the weak side. Lindell Gibson, who started 13 games, is out, and walk on Jack Tyler's playing. We see one of the great legends of Stanford quarterback history, John Elway, who's here tonight, and there's Jim Plunkett. A couple of Super Bowl champions there, Elway and Plunkett. Yeah, Plunkett beat yeah, you, didn't he, Rob? That. You couldn't wait for He's that. He's a Raider right, right there. there all night. I know that, shot. Plunkett. You happy now? <laughs> Stanford's going to run some clock here and then take their timeout with a minute and seven remaining. Well, we saw those two great quarterbacks. Jim Plunkett was the Heisman Trophy winner during his uh, Stanford days, 1970. Patriots took him with the number one overall selection in 71. I'll just point out the Super Bowl 18 win. I'll let 15 go by, John. Thanks, Mike. John Elway, he was second to Herschel in the Heisman voting in 1982. Remember, of course, he did not want to play for the Colts. They immediately forcing that trade to the Broncos. And now John Elway finds himself in charge uh, in some regard of the football operations there in Denver. He's going to retain the general manager, Brian Zanders, who was there. But John will have a very active role, and it's an intriguing subplot. Of course, he's here to see his alma mater, Stanford, play in their first ever appearance in the Discover Orange Bowl. But, oh, by the way, Jim Harbaugh, you might want to coach in the NFL. I happen to be here tonight. Michelle Tafoya indicated before that some conversations between the two will take place regarding Denver's opportunity. San Francisco, the other opening that's been mentioned prominently in the NFL. I I'm, I'm glad to see John involved. John's a football guy. I've known him a long time. Our days of the Arena Football League. He'll put together quite an organization there and oversee it. Third and ten. Luck pressured off the edge. Turns his running ability. Uh, fight for it. He is a tough guy. Rarely... It's taken down by one man, but Jack Tyler was holding on for dear life. Well shy of the first down. That's a strange call there. Stanford came out of there, the timeout, and used a quick count, and they snapped the ball, trying to catch the Hokies off guard. And you see the left tackle right there, number 50, not 55, Martin, struggling. I wish they'd blow a quicker whistle there. Well, I believe Stanford blew the play. They had a bubble screen out to the left, and the receiver just wasn't looking back for the ball. Timeout, Virginia Tech here, guys. 55 seconds left. Chance to remind you. We have the Chevrolet Halftime Report coming up. Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet out there in Glendale, Arizona, as we have our week-long coverage leading up to the BCS National Championship game. Those guys will have first-half reaction. The title preps out there is... Auburn has come from the plains out to the desert and the Goo Goo Dolls will perform here at halftime. Always a great part of the Orange Bowl legacy, the halftime entertainment. Goo Goo Dolls coming up here at halftime. Be careful with this guy. He's taking one to the house already this year. Hosier. 80 yarder against Central Michigan. Coming with the block. The flag is thrown. Stanford was uh, being the sideline there trying to say that Virginia Tech came into the neutral zone, caused us to move, which should have been a flag thrown. And then the official did throw his flag on that Stanford sideline. Now, Tom Walker, the referee, is going to wait for his guys to tell him what they saw. <laughs> Remember, it's a fourth and four. So a five-yard flag against Tech would give Stanford a first down. Well, Frank Beamer was going for the all-out block. Hosley came out of center field. They were going to go for the all-out block. They had no one deep to well, return. Start on the offense, number 44, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. This guy will twist your mind as Frank Beamer in these special team situations. He's like one of these offensive coordinators. He's got to play for just about every situation. Watch Hosley back here in the back. He's going to walk up here and cover the wing. They're coming with the all-out blitz. Trying to get the block and just let the ball bounce the other way. Here they come. 
And a really good job by Green to get it out of there and no receiver back. It's the touchback to the 20-yard line. Oh, Virginia Tech, first Monday of the season, they lost to Boise State. Boise State's great quarterback, Kellen Moore, one of the finalists of the AT&T All-America Player of the Year. 3,845 yards, one of the Heisman finalists. Virginia Tech fans, close your eyes for two seconds. Saw that on Labor Day night. You can open them back up. Appreciate more in the Mako Las Vegas Bowl, the win over Utah. You can text the vote to 345-345 from your mobile phone. Vote now. Get a chance to win a trip to the national championship. You can be out there in Glendale with us next Monday night. If you want to vote for Kellen Moore? Go do that. Vote for whoever you want. AT&T All-America Player of the Year. Two timeouts for the Hokies. And Taylor is brought down. Shane Scove continuing his star first half. Timeout Tech. 37 seconds left. You know, one of the things with Tyrod, boy, I get worried sometimes as a quarterback coach with his ball security. Take a look at it, Ron. Yeah, one hand, cover it up, wrap it up when you get in traffic. That's one of the things I heard the Stanford defenders talking about is there's going to be some opportunities for us to dislodge that ball from Tyrod Taylor if we can catch him. <laughs> that was pretty close there, waving it around like Juan. You'll see the defense go over that football. Coach's up in the box, going to see that, sending that down. Strip the football. And right now, Chase Thomas, number 44, the Cardinal, their leading sack artist with seven and a half. I think he's third in the Pac-10. Number 92, Sione Fuau, good pass rusher up the inside, but they need a pass rush right here. Out of their front. Well, rest assured, Vic Fangio, the defense quarter there, he will bring the heat once again. 37 seconds remaining. Taylor is flush. Gets rid of it just in time. And a flag is down as there was a Ben Gardner chasing Taylor. But back with Danny Cole going for the reception. There was contact. And the Stanford defensive backs are saying the ball was uncatchable. Meantime, Taylor is shaken up on the hit by Gardner of Stanford. The ball was like almost in the Gatorade bucket. Well, Thomas did yeah. tackle the receiver. Holding no matter. on the defense, number three. Ten-yard penalty, automatic. Push down. Here's the hit on Taylor that left him shaken. As he was flushed by Gardner, a Richard freshman out of Wisconsin. But the bailout call for an official is, if you don't want to call pass interference because it's uncatchable, you can say there was holding on the play if he has arm wrapped around him. And that was the call there. I don't think the ball is way out of bounds. Jim Harbaugh is going to take a timeout. You know, Stanford sideline. He wants an explanation. Yeah. I don't blame him. I do too. 30 seconds left. Guys, Tyrod Taylor came out of Hampton, Virginia as the number one dual threat quarterback in the nation. Showed some of that here in his senior year. Final game tonight. Well, he's a hard guy to defend. You can cover the route, but you still got to bring this man to justice. He can create plays with his legs. That's all Tyrod Taylor. And the touchdown pass, you can't draw this up. This is one of the best plays I've seen all year. Look at that. Stays in bounds. Huh. Delivers the strike. Tyrod Taylor, I'll start calling you Hot Rod Taylor. You make plays like that. The name is going to give you. Already got Starship 5 given out. <laughs> Let's see what the Stanford Cardinal have in mind here. Multiple defensive backs. Don't want to give up the big play. That's what the Cardinals been so good at this year on defense. The nine big plays. 30 seconds left. Hokies have one timeout remaining. And Taylor's throw down the middle is high. It sails. Incomplete. Xavier Boyce. Xavier Boyce out of Virginia Beach. The intended receiver. And Delano Howell's a very good coverage man. Just carried the vertical receiver almost like he ran the route for Virginia Tech. I'm impressed with what I've seen from this young Stanford Cardinal secondary, Ron. Their defense has been impressive. The question is, will they wear down in the second half? They're not deep on the defensive side. Three-man rush, second and ten. Taylor 
Escaping first down and more. It's the hit at the 48 yard line. Fox will stop to move the chains. But we'll start on the reset at 17 seconds. It's like we asked Frank Beamer, what's the difference between this guy and Vic? He says, well, they are similar. You just have a feeling something good's going to happen on the next play. And Taylor comes out and kills the clock quickly. 15 seconds now remaining. Here and a half. He sure is exciting. He'll take those running opportunities. He throws the ball very well. The thing he's done a much better job of as he's grown up in his offense is when he scrambles, he keeps his eyes downfield. He's running around to create with his arm. Chris Hazley, the field goal kicker, is long of the year is 52. I'm thinking he can make that. They need 17 yards in about 12 seconds with a timeout. Taylor throwing down the middle again. Held on to by Jared Boykin. What a great catch. I'm surprised Stanford blitzed in that situation. What a great throw and catch, and he's going to clock it right now. Set up a field goal. How about the read by Tyrod Taylor? Knew the blitz was coming. Threw the ball to space. Threw it to air and let his receiver Boykin go get it. You'll see it here. Here comes the pressure. Now he just lays the ball out there. He knows there's no one in center field. Let Boykin go make the catch. That's the quarterback reading the coverage, giving your wide receiver a chance to make a play when there's no safety in the middle of the field. All right, guys, let's talk here now. They had the timeout. They chose to come down and clock it. There's seven seconds left at the 20-yard line with a timeout. So they're going to try to squeeze a play in here. Well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, here's where you That's tell so Tyrod Taylor, look, we might take a shot, yeah. but do not scramble. The clock will expire. With seven seconds left now out of timeouts. He's trying to talk those guys into the belief. Give me one shot, and if not, I can throw it out there. Here's a view from our direct TV ultimate picture cam of the catch on the exchange from Taylor to Boykin. Well, you just see the hands on Boykin. This engulfs that football. He's got he wears three X gloves. Big strong guy goes up and catches the football, but I really love the read of Tyrod Taylor. He knew that middle was open, voided by the safety. That's what quarterbacks got to do: read that coverage and give your receiver a chance to make a play. This is a good move by head coach Frank Beamer, I think. Percentage play, kick the field goal, make it a one-point game. This Hazley went from a walk-on to a pretty good kicker here. He's made 20 in a row. It's a record within a single season for the Hokies. 37-yarder. Out of Brian Saunders' hold. So that defensive holding penalty, able to give Virginia Tech the chance to drive the scramble by Taylor, the pass to Boykin, all key parts of that drive to make it a one-point game before halftime. Yeah, I almost feel like it's Stanford 13, Tyrod Taylor 12. He's made four or five tremendous plays with his legs. He read the blitz in a two-minute drill, made a great throw. This young guy's for real. Now that's why he's 34 and 7 as a starter. And he's the ACC Player of the Year. Josh, you talked about Frank Beamer, who had Michael Vick and had so many good quarterbacks. One thing he's done is just create a great program there in Blacksburg. And take a perspective look. Only Joe Paterno is 45 years at Penn State in terms of the schools in the FBS. Longer run at the same school. Paterno, then Beamer on that list. 20. Fourth season as Virginia Tech head coach coming to an end. It's his alma mater. Frank played at Virginia Tech. Everything he did during his career was about Virginia Tech as a player. Then when he went to Murray State, so much of it was about getting back to Virginia Tech. And in a quarter century took a school that was not in a conference into the Big East, won championships there. The ACC expanded. They brought Virginia Tech in. And they've won the championship three of the last four years here. Stewart, who has the touchdown run earlier, lost the football. It's picked up by the kicker, but we're at halftime. <laughs> so Justin Meyer can't make anything happen, and then he's got a fumble recovery in the arms ball. 13-12 as we head off to the break. Jim Harbaugh's team leads by one, and Michelle Tafoya has the Stanford head coach. Coach, a couple of very big plays by Tyrod Taylor. What concerns you about him in the second half? Well, he's a heck of a player, and uh, all the youngsters out here are playing their tails off on both sides. They've made some plays. We've made some plays. 
They're just battling out there. Your top priority was making sure the protections were sound, getting the run game going. You've got 112 rushing yards so far. How satisfied are you on that side of things? Well, uh, there's some things I'm satisfied. Now, we made some mistakes that are uncommon, and we haven't made the entire football season, haven't seen them all year. So we're trying to get that tightened up and uh, just keep fighting. This is a football fight out here tonight. Coach, thank you. All right, thanks. Mike. Stanford Michelle going for an eighth straight win. Virginia Tech for 12 in a row. On the other side, it's the Chevrolet Halftime Report with Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit. Stanford leads by one at the half. The Discover Orange Bowl. The Pac-10's elite versus the ACC's best. The Cardinals struck first. Tyrod Taylor made his presence known. Will Virginia Tech deliver or Stanford conquer? The Stanford Cardinal versus the Virginia Tech Hokies. The Discover Orange Bowl continues. The Cardinal on top by one as we get set to the third quarter of the third of the five. BCS game, 77th Discover Orange Bowl. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski, Michelle Zafoy on the sideline. We'll check with Michelle in a little bit. Time for our Chevrolet second half look ahead. Jaws, where are we looking here for the Hokies? Well, the Hokies have done a really good job with Tyrod Taylor. He has manufactured some plays with his movement. I'd like to see some design movement to get him outside the pocket and continue to pressure Andrew Luck. He's only got 86 yards passing in that first half. Bud Foster's dialed up some good blitzes by that Hokie defense. I want to see the Stanford Cardinal air it out on offense. I haven't seen a free safety on defense for Virginia Tech. I want to see Andrew Luck push it down the field. And for the Hokies, I want the ball in Tyrod Taylor's hands. A lot more of the option that they showed later in the first half. This guy Taylor's dangerous, and Stanford's got to do a better job of tackling. Virginia Tech will get the ball and start the third quarter. David Wilson. Suspended for the first quarter for a curfew violation. One of the two men back. Rock Carmichael is going to take this to the 10. Slide down at the 21. Here is Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, I spoke with Frank Beamer at halftime. He said there's really nothing that he didn't expect there in the first half, and he likes the way that his defense has slowed down Stanford's run, but he wants his own offense to run the ball better. So he thinks they need to spread things out a little bit more. We saw a couple of nice option plays from Virginia Tech in the first half. He'd like to incorporate a bit more of that, so that's something to look for, Mike. Okay, Michelle, thank you. For the second time on a kickoff, Jarek Lancaster, backup linebacker for Stanford, is injured. And... Uh, Medical staff out to check on him. He's squeezing his foot, just trying to get some fluids in there. So hopefully, just a cramp and Lancaster will be all right. Good you know, sign. You know, these two staffs, Mike, polar opposites, really. Stanford, a lot of NFL experience mm -hmm. on that sideline. And over here with Frank Beamer, loads of college experience. Can't wait to see how these two staffs. Just at the half. And great familiarity. Ryan Stanford staff recently in the NFL, following some of that Jim Harbaugh pedigree. Brian Williams is the back from 21. He takes it. And only about two yards. John? Well, let's take a look at Tyrod Taylor, the highlight of the first half. Look, he's looking to the right the whole way. Doesn't even see. Number four, David Wilson. He's scrambling around, looking around. He's still looking right. <laughs> Making people miss, keeping the play alive. Flips his hips and throws the ball. Touchdown. Hard to imagine that play again. He's a showman, this kid. Brian Randall had a wonderful career in Blacksburg. Still a quarterback. Emerged over the last couple of seasons and great leader off the field as well. Taylor flush, Chase Thomas chasing. And Taylor will run for about three yards. We talked about it earlier. This Virginia Tech season started on a Monday night in an NFL stadium. It was Labor Day outside of D.C. at FedEx Field. They lost to Boise State. Five days later, losing to James Madison in FCS school at 0-2. Everybody had their heads down. But Frank Taylor said, I knew we were going to be all right just by the character of our players and how they responded the next day. And Taylor led that much talk about meeting with the seniors, get things turned around. You see they've made history, losing the first two and then going 11 in a row, trying to make it a dozen here tonight. Six defensive backs for the Cardinal. 
showing pressure off the weak side. Well, he's picked up the pressure. Taylor's throw is incomplete. Garrett Boykin has slipped free into an opening. And Taylor was just a bit too quick. Yeah, Boykin broke open on that play. And if Jared Taylor could have been Tyrod Taylor could have held out of that ball just one split second more and let that route define itself, he would have had Jared Boykin for a big play. Mr. Sherman fell down. Oof. Cardinals got a break there. Out of Chandler, Arizona. Sophomore Drew Terrell back. Brian Saunders will punt it away. Returnable, 39 yards, 35, or turns it six yards. As the tackle is made by Kenny Younger, and here comes Andrew Luck. And we talked about the attributes that Andrew Luck has, and I like this. The ball handling skill right here. Play a game with the defense, and you see the mobility. Luck gets out on the perimeter. Look at his eyes, look left, then he comes back to the right, extends the play for completion. And here's a beautiful throw, the passing accuracy. But what I noticed there first is look to the left to hold that safety away from Ertz so he could hit him in that tight window for the touchdown. Outstanding defense, what the seeing here tonight with the Hokies. Quick pop to Ryan Whalen, the captain, to the 47-yard line. The kid was a walk-on to camp and surprise when he was a freshman. And Ryan Whalen has developed through his career to become a co-captain and the second-leading receiver on this Stanford team. Well, that time Stanford went to an empty backfield set. Virginia Tech blitzed it, and Luck did a nice job finding his hot receiver. I like to see Luck take a shot right here in this middle of the field area on a good down and distance he's getting that single isolation route to the outside sooner or later he's got to take a shot devon taylor opening left open field tackle by devon morgan out of richmond virginia with a first down for the sophomore taylor john we watched film you told me about luck and breaking him down now just tell me what you see live watch him first half against a good defense oh he's got incredible field presence he's got a great game day demeanor he sees everything he's running the show he finds his alternate receivers total command of the running game the pass protection this entire offense Zach Ertz came close to you there. He scored the touchdown, a 25-yarder in the second quarter. Luck is going to get out of that pocket. He almost gave J. Ron Hosley his 10th interception of the year, and that one would have gone all the way home. Well, that's not a good decision by Luck right there. He's going to get pressure off the right side from Drager. Take a look at it. Luck looking left here. A little stunt off the right side. And you got to see throws. And J. Ron Hosley does an excellent job playing with his eyes. He looks like a Sunday player, that guy. That was a bad decision by Luck there. He got away with one. Hosley's got some Saturdays left, too. Sophomore. Oh, and Marisa, the fullback, comes over, picks up the blitz. Luck has time to throw for the first down. To Conrad Rule in the tight end. Give some love to the offensive line. Gave Luck time to hang in that pocket, stay on that back foot, and deliver the football down the field. But one thing about Andrew Luck, he's smooth in the pocket, really good feet. Mechanics are perfect and delivers the strike. These Hokie safeties are shallow. Oftentimes, six yards deep in the ball snap. That's it, that's all we are right now, John. Luck play action. A lot of space to run for Kobe Fleener up and over inside the 20. Kobe Fleener, Ruland, Ertz, three different tight ends. A little bootleg. He's going to fake it to his left, and Fleener slides across the formation. Good touch, good accuracy. How about that for a big guy? That's some, got some air right oh. there from Fleener. They got a lot of good tight ends, and they use them all. Like the play design, use the mobility of Andrew Luck. This guy is six foot four, 235 pounds, and he can move. And the red 
zone. Luck on the move, on the run. It's Ryan Warren, first down. First and goal at the wall. I oh, really like what Stanford did coming out to start this half. Open the formations up. Let the Heisman runner up take over. They shift to a bunch formation, and you're going to see pressure once again. Actually, he just saw the outflank and took off and ran and found Wayland. He makes a nice run after the catch. But this quarterback sees everything. He's got incredible touch. That's an athletic play. Jim Harbaugh talks about his quarterbacks making athletic plays. You said it, John. He just felt that void in the defense got to the outside. He's a strike. Seven offensive linemen in the game for Stanford. Taylor, the running back, stop. Whitley and Bruce Taylor make the first contact inside the one. Hokies digging it. They really got to give Virginia Tech a lot of credit on defense. Other than the long run by Jeremy Stewart early, they stuffed a lot of a lot of plays. Well, John Harbaugh has tried to instill a toughness, a physical toughness in this Stanford football team. It has to come to the forefront right here. They need to punch this into the end zone. Uh, one of the four retired jerseys in Tech history, Bruce Smith trying to watch the current defensive line of the Stanford. It's Marisa. Keeps going. And I don't think he got in. Third down. They try to feed the two-way starter, linebacker, and fullback, Marisa. Take a look at the Virginia Tech defensive linemen, how low they are. They get underneath the pads of these Stanford Cardinal linemen, and they reject Marisa, setting up another third and inches. I got to think this is a quarterback sneak with the six foot four, 230 pound luck. Well, Jack Tyler, that middle linebacker, did an outstanding job of filling and driving that pile back. Just wedge it off the right side behind the Castro and Beeler. Get on with the game. Luck will give again Marisa, and he's in the end zone. Cardinal touchdown. Great play caller, John. Well, you got an All-America center and dealer, and you got an all-conference right guard. Just slam it right off the right side behind those two blocks. And let Marisa, who does it all for Stanford, drive it across the goal line. And you see Kobe Fleener from that wing position create a little bit of seam right there for Marisa to push that pile into the end zone. Hey, Whitaker missed the extra point. Wide right. Just left it out there. Fifth extra point he has missed. One blocked earlier today. The lead remains at seven for the Cardinals. They've missed two one pointers tonight. Brad Nessler, Todd Blacklick join you down in New Orleans, the All-State Sugar Bowl tomorrow night on ESPN, ESPN3.com, ESPN Radio, and on your phone as well. Terrell Pryor and Ryan Mallett. Great starting record of Pryor during his Buckeye days. Ryan Mallett almost went up against Ohio State when he was at Michigan, but he does so as Arkansas makes its BCS Bowl debut. This time tomorrow night right here on ESPN. The golf return, David Wilson, great speed. Squirting through that hole, Wilson tackles across the 30-yard line. Well, the guy who just scored the touchdown comes back to play inside linebacker. Owen Marisic, this experiment, if you will, started yeah, in the spring of 2009. Yeah, but watch the adjustment as a fullback in the hole. Then he's on defense. He comes through the traps and sacks Tyrod Taylor. Watch him find the ball, get off the block, and make a tackle. And then on the goal line, he caps off a very good drive. He'll end up playing for a team like the New England Patriots. <laughs> Right. Well, this guy right here is an early candidate for the MVP of the game. These are the kind of guys you've got to love. Yeah, he'll be he'll be a Sunday fullback. This guy can get after people. Crack blocks very well. All right, Taylor has pressure. Trying to get away. Nowhere to go. Leno Howell came on that blitz from the safety position and the second team all-conference player with the big loss. That's a timely strong safety blitz and that's an excellent job coming from way, way off the ball. And Tyrod never saw him. 
John Stanford has blitzed 15 times in this game. It's generated three sacks, so they have been productive. Big fan Joe defense coordinator loves to dial up the pressure for the work of the night. That's how to get half of it back here. Second and 23. Taylor wants it. Let's go. Got some time here. And beautifully thrown. Danny Cole, he got it all back and more. Oh, all the way down to the 41. What great design by this Virginia Tech coaching staff. They sprint to the right and throw it back to the left. Take a look at this play. Taylor goes to his right. He goes back to his left. Great pass protection. Good touch. How about the protection, John? To let that receiver cross all the way across the field like that. The quarterback's going to need about four seconds to let that develop. And you are right, John. Beautiful touch. Throwing into the void of the defense. And second and 23, they gained 42. David Wilson now running back. Good look, Taylor. Picked at that time. Did a good job to gain his maximum yardage. On that run. The support that Virginia Tech gets. They've been down to this bowl three times the last four years, and the school started back up in Blacksburg today. I mean, they kept the Virginia Tech crowd down a little bit, plus coming here for the third time in four years. But always well supported the Hokies. Taylor Got it. has time. Down the middle, it's intercepted. So Howell, who made the big play on the blitz at the start of this drive, Ends it with his fifth interception. Go ahead, David Wilson coming out of the backfield wide open. Tyrod never saw. Him. Just the fifth interception thrown this year by Tyrod Taylor. Stafford gets it back. A seven point lead. Moore Park, inner city of Miami, youth and high school football stadium, 1,500 seats. Part of the 75th anniversary Orange Bowl. A little bit of a legacy gift that was completed and opened up here this year. And there was on hand ACC Commissioner John Swafford, Pac-10 Commissioner Larry Scott. Congrats to Eric Palms, the Orange Bowl CEO, and everyone else for that Moore Park rebuild. Concluded this week. After the interception, Stanford takes over the three. And Stephon Taylor is off to the races. Taylor at midfield. All the way to the 41. First down gain of 56 yards. A great run by the sophomore. And we'll get a look at it with a view from our direct TV ultimate picture cast. Now well, the shifts are just killing Virginia Tech. They move all five eligibles. And Virginia Tech is totally confused. Doesn't line up properly. And they are hurt. And now play action. Kobe Fleeters wide open. Cargo touchdown. The marker at the 25-yard line. Let's see if it's offense or defense. Looks like it's going to be defensive holding. Mm -hmm. yep. John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, excuse me, John's watching at home, I'm sure. Jim with a beautiful play-action fake. Take your shot. We just had the big run. The defense is sagging. You're in that go zone. Beautifully executed by the Stanford Cardinal. Look at the throw from Andrew Luck. Just lays it in there to Fleener. Extra point is made by Nate Whitaker. How about those two plays? The run by Taylor, 56. The 41-yard pass to Fleener. Are you Stanford alone? You can all sing all right now. The Cardinal back-to-back -back touchdowns. So glad you're with us on the first Monday of 2011, the Discover Orange Bowl, and a bang, bang, bang from the Cardinal. Three big plays 
by Stanford in a row has extended it out to a 26 to 12 lead. Andrew Luck has used his play action passing game beautifully. Four for four, 71 yards and a touchdown so far. Aaron Hosley looking for space. His own man is in the way. The tackle made 22 yard line by Michael Thomas. A view from our DirecTV ultimate, ultimate picture cam going to give us really a turning point stretch here. First, it starts with the Delano Howell interception of Tyrod Taylor. He had the back Wilson coming out of the wheel route. Very next play. Turn and give it to the speed of Stephon Taylor. The sophomore took it on a 56 yard run. Very next snap. It's luck to Fleener, the tight end. Cody Fleener's 41 yard score. And just like that, Virginia Tech trying to tie the game. Now down two touchdowns and losing two yards with a Darren Evans run. The Stanford defense right now, their energy really picked up after those couple big fly, big plays by their offense. Get a chance, make an interception, all of a sudden you go to the sideline, you're getting some wind, and in two plays your offense scores. That'll really give you some energy to come back on the field. You can just see that cardinal energy. They're ready to rock. Taylor chased by Stone. Got away from him and could not get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of about three yards. You know, guys, as we hit the top of the hour here, just thinking of the perspective on each side. Frank Beamer told us last night it's one of the three most important games we've played. We only have one win against the team in the top five. And for all the things we've done to build this great program, we need to be a top five. Yeah, I was shocked when he said it's one of our most important games. And on the other side, if this is Jim Harbaugh's last game as the Stanford head coach, they want to have a top five season. In the history of the polls, the final poll, they've never been that high. So landmark stuff at stake tonight both ways. Taylor, third down strike. Caught Jared Boyker. First down, 35. That's a nice blitz pickup. And Tyrod Taylor shows his arm right here. Stanford continues to try to get people in Tyrod's face. They pick up the blitz. You're going to see the blitz pick up right off Taylor's right. But he just throws this right off his back foot. That's impressive. That's called looking down the gun barrel, John. That hit's coming. You got to take a shot, and he delivered. You can see the arm strength, as you just said. This Tyrod Taylor is very impressive to me. Middle Evans is past the 40. Alex Stepniak made the tackle. There are Tyrod Taylor's parents, Rodney and Trina, watching Tyrod's final game as a Virginia Tech quarterback. I don't think Trina's she watching that. That. <laughs> That's how my mom used to watch the game. <laughs> Close her eyes. That's important for Tyrod to get everybody back in this game on Virginia Tech's sideline. They need a score. He's been a great leader, too. All the way through to any adversity, the Hokies have faced. Adjusting this play to a run with Evans who slipped and fell as the captain Sione Fua chased him down. Evans, Evans on the run. The run of the work tonight. Have not seen Ryan Williams, the promising young back. It's been mostly Evans. Williams limited by a hamstring pull. They shut him down leading up to the game, but let him go the last two practices. Felt he would be good to go. He has been very limited here tonight. David Wilson not in the field right now. He is their most explosive back, and he was the one that was open on that wheel route that Taylor had intercepted. Is there a big play for the Hokies. Third and three. It's over the middle. Stove defending Andre Smith. Fourth down. This guy Stove has been all over the field in coverage, rushing the quarterback, making plays in the run. Number 11, Shane Stove. You'll see him as a stand-up linebacker here. Now he drops in the coverage, hugs up to the tight end, and bats it down. 
He has been very impressive, John. Yeah, and that was an easy route to cover. You'd like to see Andre Smith have a crossing route there, but when you sit down in this man-to-man -man coverage, Stowe's going to own you in that situation. Ryan Saunders kicking away. 46 yards, very late. Fair catch called for by Drew Terrell. Terrell. Up stamp. Two and a half to go. Luck back on the field when you come back. From Sun Life Stadium here in South Florida. Tonight's aerial coverage is brought to you by Goodyear. Michelle Tafoya down on the sideline. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski. Game three of the five in the Bowl Championship Series. The champions of the ACC, Virginia Tech. And Stanford, runner-up in the Pac-10 to Oregon. The only Stanford loss of the season to the team that one week from right now will be playing Auburn here on ESPN in the Tostitos DCS National Title. Great job by Luck as that snap was bobbled. Came right back in his hands. Loss of a half yard. Well, look at these shifts. They are driving Virginia Tech crazy. Three guys shift from right to left, and Virginia Tech has to reset the front. And when they reset the front in the coverage, then motion goes, and you see number 15, Eddie Whitley, get out of position. It's just a simple handoff. You've got the walk-on Jack Tyler in there. Bruce Taylor went from the strong backer to the weak backer. That's a bad run fit. That is stealing. Great job by Stanford. And how about the block by left? Guard and Phillips. He just threw out that defensive line. Taylor, who had that big run, takes it to the 20, a couple of yards shy of the touchdown. Now, these are three fifth year seniors on this offensive line, and they like this part of the game. When they get a 26 to 12 lead, a two score lead in the second half, they continue to ram the ball at you. And this is a balanced offense. Ron, they've run the ball almost 60% of the time this year at Stanford. They can do it all from an offensive standpoint. This is one of their favorite things to do is let this veteran offensive line cut it loose. And he talked about that balance shot so far tonight. 23 rushing plays, 184 yards, 19 pass plays, a buck 78. That's balance. Third and three, Andrew Luck. Pressure. Flush. Puts it up. Oh, and it's caught for the first down by Fleener. Great play to the 32. Stephen Friday was one second too late. I'm well, glad John Elway's here to see yeah, that. That's right. That's called extending the play, coach. And Andrew Luck does an amazing job here. Here comes the pressure right up the middle. He escapes to the right. And this is throwing a receiver up. open. From the 32. Tyler Gaffney trying to get to the line of scrimmage. Oh, through three missed tackles. Gaffney to the 40-yard line. It's very rare for a Buzz Foster defense. Mostly in Carmichael, the two corners, blue tackles there. Yeah, but Mike, how many backs do they have at Stanford? I mean, with Jeremy Stewart ripped off a 60-yard touchdown. We've seen a lot of Stephen Taylor. And now look at Gaffney. Gets out of one tackle, gets out of another, gets out of a third. These guys smell it. Stanford taking control of the game. 13 points in that third quarter and one quarter away from making a 12-win season. Perhaps the last line of the Jim Harbaugh resume on the farm in Palo Alto. Through three at the Discover Orange Bowl. Stanford leads by 14. And 11 Discover Orange Bowl and Tyrod Taylor trying to see if there's one quarter left one drive that he can get his team back in in his final quarter as a Virginia Tech quarterback 26 12 Andrew Luck and Stanford came out of the locker room with two touchdown drives and some big plays quarter four begins with second and three and smoking it out for Chris Owusu the ball for a second there but gets it one yard shy of that first down is a wusu you mentioned bud foster all 24 years with frank beamer the defensive coordinator always used to having great teams here takes great pride in what that defense does effort wise 
getting after his guys in the timeout. Yeah, when you run for 190 plus yards in less than three quarters against Virginia Tech, Buck Foster will unload on you. Got a lot of pride. We talk about that balance. Stanford, 191 yards rushing, 191 yards passing. The play here, third and yard. They give it to the fullback Morisic, who continues his good night on both sides of the ball for the first down. How can you not love this guy? I mean, Owen Morisek just finding a way to get yardage, move the chains. The guy continues to play linebacker, fullback, running off to the sideline. Just a little chance to get a win. They keep running right, right behind his right guard, DeCastro, number 52. Boy, has he played a good game tonight inside for the Cardinals. Here's your Morisek meter, 69 plays. 69 of the 95 plays in tonight's Discover on play. Maurice has been on the field. And we get a flag showing this play. Like Ertz moved a little bit. We'll start on the offense, number 86. Five year panel. We talk about Maurice, guys, and all the things he does. You know, this summer, just to do a job, just to make some money, he picked. Got range uh, range balls at the golf course pick range balls and then the other part of his summer job was as a research assistant examining the risk factors in infections that happen related to knee replacements I'd probably do the golf ball yeah <laughs> more, <laughs> that's more down your uh, your line of work get, yeah we got a lot to come yeah. no one really I think you, <laughs> did you major that at Dayton John well Stanford known for its uh, Great academics and many brilliant people over the years. The run by Tyler Gaffney for about three yards. You know, guys, talk about Stanford, and they haven't won a football national championship except back in the pre-war days with Pop Warner. But they've won 99 NCAA championships. They have athletes in so many great sports. As a matter of fact, this summer, a 10-week stretch, I worked with three greats in their sports on ESPN. Tom Watson, the British Open. Yep. Julie Foudy, the great soccer player. Julie was a player at Stanford, an All-American, the captain there. And John McEnroe at the U.S. Open. So I worked in a 10-week stretch with three Stanford, well-educated, brilliant people. And I got to get you two. Yeah, I knew that was coming, yeah. You work every <laughs> week your whole life. Yeah, what, what's wrong with Youngstown State, Mike? Come on. We got Dayton, Ohio. We got no two here. Two great schools. Thank you. Not Stanford. A second and 12. <laughs> uh, Wide open again. What a game for Fleener. Another touchdown. Came out that first half. Was not real sharp with 86 yards passing that first half, but come out the second half. They're moving it around. He's finding everybody. Watch this it. is a perfect throw right here. Again, he feels that void in defense, moves his right. <laughs> and he's got Fleener right down the sideline. It's just a long handoff. This is a very accurate quarterback, and that is always the most overlooked aspect of quarterback. Great stuff tonight, huh? You know what you can't see on his front, guys? Everything else is A plus. A plus person. Great player. And leading Stanford to one of the great wins in school history tonight. One week from tonight, Brett Musburger, Kirk Herbstreit will be in Glendale, Arizona, bring you the Heisman winner, Cam Newton, against LaMichael James and Oregon. Number one against number two, those great scoring offenses. The Tostitos BCS National Championship game. Coverage begins 8 Eastern on ESPN HD, ESPN 3D, ESPN3.com on your phone. And John and I will have to call for you on ESPN Radio. Those be out west. If you're heading home from work, we'll get to the Herbie and Brent. Returned by David Wilson out to the 25-yard line. Well, guys, the story coming in was Andrew Luck out of Houston, Texas, still with eligibility left. Red shirt in his first year on campus, and the next two years has played and started for Jim Harbaugh. And we talk about Harbaugh's future so much here today. What's the question with Luck? Will he come back? We've heard from everyone we've spoken to, and you guys have concurred. He's number one overall draft pick material, franchise quarterback. Does he come back for another year at Stanford, or will he put himself into the draft knowing there's uncertainty with the NFL labor situation coming up with the draft in April and beyond? 
Tyrod Taylor trying to keep something alive. In no, I, think, for Marcus uh, Davis. I think Andrew Luck is going to make that decision just like he plays the quarterback position. This guy makes no impulse decisions. That, he made that clear to us last night. He's going to do all the preparation. He's going to make a good decision just like he plays quarterback. But what do you do if you're him? I mean, he's just a kid. He could play two more years at Stanford. Well, I'd like to see him stay in Stanford and keep playing personally. Well, there's no doubt that he could make the next step to the National Football League. We watched him on tape all week, John. We saw his ability to read and process information. We see him practically the way he stroke the football. And you watch him the way he commands the game. Very good. Tyron Taylor to Jared Boykin, 21 yards. You saw Oliver Luck there. His dad, Oliver, was an executive in the NFL Europe phase, and that's one of the reasons that Andrew spent a lot of time overseas in Germany. But certainly football's been a part of his life. Life, His dad played the game, now an administrator, athletic director at West Virginia. That plus Jim Harbaugh, his decade and a half in the NFL, he has as great a pool around him to make this difficult decision as any quarterback in recent memory. Taylor taking a home run shot to David Wilson. An unbelievable catch as Wilson locates it, but out of bounds. You complete. Well, they've had some chances, Virginia Tech, in this second half to make some big plays in the passing game. Had an interception where they had Wilson wide open on a swing route that time. Wilson's wide open. He runs right by a safety. Taylor Scoffle, take a look at it. He looks off the free safety and this has got a chance for a big play. Taylor got away from Stowe. It was complete to Danny Cole. Got hit in the small of the back of the tailbone. You just see the awareness in the pocket of Tyrod Taylor. A lot of times when you look at these mobile quarterbacks that run around, that's not what you see with, with Taylor. He looks downfield, eyes are downfield, resets his feet, and throws a strike. That is uncommon, ladies and gentlemen, when a quarterback does that, especially when you have that skill set to run like Tyrod Taylor does to keep his eyes downfield and deliver a strike. I hope he's got to do a much better job picking up these blitzes. Mm -hmm. Comes another one right up the middle. Three was Chase Thomas. It forced Taylor out of the pocket. And the cleanup made by Chike Amajoy, the backup linebacker. These blitzes just keep coming and coming. Big just, Banjo just bringing the heat right up into the face of Tyrod Taylor. They mirror their offense, I think, Ron. The Stanford defense is very multiple. That was the 20th blitz brought by Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator for the Cardinal. And they've generated four sacks with him. Yard shot of the first down, Marisic and Scove. Ever present in the middle made the tackle. You know, you guys mentioned Marisic, and for those who haven't been following Stanford very closely, he did finish 10th in the Heisman voting this yep. year. And Andrew Luck was the runner up, and as he was there, the announcement in New York, he was just as excited afterwards, obviously disappointed he didn't win, but when he saw Marisic was 10th, he texted him right away. He was so excited that his teammate joined him in the top 10 of the ballot. Third and three. The complete to Jared Boykin for the first down is Taylor running for his life. Watch these two defensive ends for Stanford. They're going to stand up and they're going to run right into the A-gap and blitz. Take a look at them. And they get pressure right up the middle. <laughs> Fortunately for Tyrod Taylor, he has ice water in his veins. He has tremendous <laughs> poise. Doesn't he? He's, He's hanging in there. and down on him. He's making play after play. with Williams not going to go anywhere you know guys we watch the NFL obviously every week and we see more and more not prototypical NFL quarterbacks big guy get back there stay in the pocket mobility is a factor with so many teams and quarterbacks start looking at the playoffs 
And Jaws, I like the point you made about Tyrod Taylor. When he gets out for a mobile guy who can run so well, he's terrific at setting his feet before he throws. Yeah, that, that's very uncanny. And he gets he is well coached at Virginia Tech. In fact, you know, we've spent some time with both of these teams, and these are not your prototypical college teams. They are absolutely well coached in the proper fundamentals that project them to the next level. Shot for Andre Smith, just a hair out of his reach. We have a holding or a penalty flag back at the 35 yard line. Personal foul, chop block, offense number 34, 15 yard penalty, repeat second down. Ryan Williams, that pressure that was coming. Yeah, they continue to bring pressure right up the middle. It's a simple one. When a guy is engaged up above the waist being blocked, you can't be a second blocker low on him below the legs. And a good call by this Big 12 crew. It's done a very good job for the most part here tonight. Yes, they have. And think of these Virginia Tech backs. Number 32, Darren Evans, Ryan Williams. Boy, they've been quiet tonight. Got to give this stamp of defense credit. Neither one of these guys has done much. Williams, four carries, four yards. Evans, 12, 37. Timeout. Stanford. First charge of the half. Full. Cardinal getting organized on second and 24. From South Florida, tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Home of the Miami Dolphins has taken over as the home for this Discover Orange Bowl. The actual site of the Orange Bowl is going to be the home of baseball's Florida Marlins. Of course, the Orange Bowl was raised a few years ago. The new baseball stadium going in. One more season for the Marlins here. And then the new place opens in 2012. Taylor throws right through the hands of Michael Thomas out of Houston, Texas. You know, Mike, you got to give a lot of credit to this Stanford defense. You know, they had three shutouts this year. They shut out UCLA, shut out Oregon State, Washington, gave up 44 points in their last five games. And when you lay down a performance like this against the Hokies, they've given up 12 points tonight. And let's be honest, the touchdown that they did score was a broken play that was one of the most magnificent yes. things we've ever seen yep. from Tyrod Taylor. Great defensive show by Vic Fangio. The defensive coordinator and his staff. Third and 24, right up the middle scope. Taylor got out of that one. The one man band right now trying to survive. Yeah, this is meet me at the quarterback drill right here. He had five Cardinal jerseys all over Tyrod Taylor. It's been the same blitz almost the entire yep. second half. And it's two of Vic Fangio's favorite players. Number 11, Shane Sko, and this number 44, Chase Thomas. Fangio told us Chase Thomas is one of those guys that's in a grumpy mood all the time. <laughs> he was born to play football. You got to really be impressed with Scope tonight. I can't imagine being around somebody who's grumpy all the time. It's really? Like Saunders with the kick. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> He'll be down to the 28-yard line. You're right. Andrew Luck's at the top of the marquee, but he brings some pretty good supporting cast. Like the defense and the stars of this game, Shane Scove, making Luck a happy man tonight. For 15 years in the National Football League, Jim Harbaugh was a very good quarterback. Threw 129 touchdowns. Knows what it takes at the college level at Michigan and in the NFL. And he knows he's got a special guy in Andrew Luck. Who tonight, with a lot of hype coming in, a really okay first half has been spectacular in the second half. Three touchdowns, 249 passing yards. Tyrod Taylor, his numbers are impressive because it has been under major duress. Oh Stephon Taylor, the Stanford big runs have killed the Hokies here tonight. You know, so many, those the tackle. Excuse me, Mike. So many of these college defenses nowadays, they see the spread formation. The spread formation. They don't see two backs, two tight ends, and a team that really knows how to slam the ball at you. And you can't block these plays any better than the Stanford Cardinal has blocked them. There's no one on the screen but Stephon Taylor. David DeCastro once again coming around the horn and getting that kick out, blocking. 
John, you may have been able to run through that hole. Look at this. Wow. Now, now you're just showing off. <laughs> like the band. Shifting to an unbalanced line with two tight ends to the left. And Stephon Taylor. All right, you want to shift? I'll get you there. Who's Taylor the tackle with? I wouldn't go for no that game. either, personally. If I was Bud Foster. Long, cold look across the way from one of the most respected coordinators in the league. You see, we talked about in the first half, the volume of offense Stanford carries. The center, Beeler, has plays on his wrist. That luck is calling there in the huddle. He's got his wristbands on as well. A play action pass here. Luck has another Kobe Fleener touchdown. That's the hat trick for Fleener. Well, they show you that power running game. Two bats, three tight ends. Pounded, pounded, pounded. Also, everyone's cheating up near the line of scrimmage. Safety's getting nosy. And you just get big plays, all vertical routes down the field. Fleener wide open down the middle. You'll see it here. Three tight ends, two backs, play action. You see Ertz and Fleener right down the middle. Fleener wide open and right on the money, as usual, from Andrew Luck. You saw the frustrated linebacker Bruce Taylor just fling his mouthpiece. He's so disgusted with a very uncommon defensive effort. 40 points, 518 yards. Thorough and complete domination in the second half for the Cardinal offense. Discover Orange Bowl. That trophy will uh, be heading off to Palo Alto. First time Stanford has ever appeared in this game. It's been a pretty good quarterback run. Don't forget Steve Stentrum in there. And will Andrew Luck be back? Is this his last game for the Cardinal? The numbers are eye popping. 40 to 12. Jaron Hosley the return. And how about the guy who's been the defensive star of the night? A special teams tackle by Shane Scove. The offensive star, Andrew Luck. Charles. And he's been eye popping in the second half, Mike. 201 yards through the air. The play action's been terrific. Five for five, 109 yards, two touchdowns. He's making all kinds of throws. Oh. This one here, just watch that one. That is a thing of beauty. Again, just the awareness in the pocket, the long handoff. Kobe Fleener and his throw down the middle well executed Andrew Luck has been just rock solid picking in the second half in command of this offense that Rod Taylor is still under pressure under duress yet another sack that is six sacks for the Cardinal Thomas Kaiser out of Wexford Pennsylvania part of that group well, every snap is a blitz and the last seven to eight blitzes by Stanford have all gotten home. 23 blitzes, a half dozen sacks now. Low snap for Taylor there. His throw is incomplete. Now, a lot of the questions post game for Stanford will be about the future. We know Frank Beamer is going to be back in Blacksburg. What will happen with Luck? What will happen with Jim Harbaugh, who is uh, being heavily courted by the NFL, the 49ers with the opening there in the Bay Area. Denver Broncos, you see John Elway here. John is now taking a management role with the Broncos. So those conversations will begin in earnest. The official wooing, if you will. Taylor third down, trying to take off. Scold again. I don't remember doing any game at any level. Yeah. I've called one defensive player that many times. Yeah, he's been unbelievable blitzing and coverage on special teams. I think mean, Scove has just been everywhere. This guy is a football player. He came in with four and a half sacks and 72 tackles. Almost, I feel like he's doubled that tonight. He has just made every play on couple, defense for Stanford. Couple of sacks, two and a half tackles for loss, nine tackles total tonight. Shane Scove. Brian Saunders will punch it away. We'll get a flag. 
Just back for one more thought on uh, Harbaugh and where his future goes. Rich Rodriguez is Offense, still the coach at Michigan. Six. Dave Brandon, the athletic director, will meet with Rodriguez as the week goes on. Later on, latter half of the week, Michigan embarrassed in their bowl game by Mississippi State. That thing hasn't worked well for the last few years. Jim not only was a star at Michigan for one of his coaching idols, Bo Schembechler, he also went to high school, at Pioneer High School, right across the street from the big house. His dad, Jack, was coaching at Michigan at that time, so there are a lot of ties if he chooses to stay in college. Well, that NFL stuff with his brother John in Baltimore is very appealing. We got Sports Center right now, and here's Scott Van Pelt. Good evening, I'm Scott Van Pelt. Sports Center right now, presented by Discover. LeBron James goes for 38, Dwayne Wade 31. The Heat beat the Bobcats by 14. They've won 11 straight on the road. Meanwhile, in Cleveland, Eric Mangini is out. Mike Holmgren would not rule out the possibility that he could be the successor. Steve Levy, you and me for Sports Center after the Orange Bowl in Miami. Thank you, Scott. We'll see you then. 4.25 to go. Jeremy Stewart has started the game with a big 60-yard run. Devon Morgan with the tackle, and after the play, on the Stanford offensive lineman, and the secondary for Virginia Tech with some post-play pushing. Yeah, that time Tyler Mabry clearly late. John Lynch, in addition to Elway and Plunkett. Some of the NFL greats in Stanford history. Play. Gene Personal Washington. Foul on this area, this late hit. Offense number 77. It's 15 yard penalty. Second down. Gene Washington sees one of those. He thinks back. He has to <laughs> go find somebody. That was his job with the National Football League and the league officer a long time. Stanford has so many great alums. See, even beyond the realm of sports, as Harbaugh tries to straighten that out with Mabry. Condoleezza Rice and John Elway with a handshake there. Of course, the uh, 66th United States Secretary of State holding that office under President George W. Bush. Oh my Sandra, amazing. Sandra Day O'Connor, former Supreme Court Justice, founders of Google, first woman to the moon, Sally Ride, Herbert Hoover, president. Stanford, pretty good school. I'm impressed, Mike. You know, as good as Stanford looks. You got to really tip your hat. Sam Knapp to run there. They gave a tight end a chance to carry the ball. Got to tip your hat to everybody involved with Stanford. But when you think about the game that's coming next Monday night, how good must Oregon be? And if Oregon Oof. beat Stanford like they did, how good are the Oregon Ducks? And how about the Auburn Tigers in Oregon squaring off for all the marbles? Those must really be something. Looking forward to that one. That one's that one's going to be a battle. I just correct myself there a second. They're two at number 80s. That was McGillicuddy, James McGillicuddy, who's been uh, the where's Waldo on this team this year. He's worn 80 and 41, 74 as a lineman. That time he had 80 on to get the carry. 6'3", <laughs> 307, sixth year senior. Get the chance to carry it. Timeout taken there. John, you talked about. Oregon, Stanford's only loss of the season, October 2. 21 3. Stanford jumped out on top. But much like Virginia Tech cannot stop Stanford's run game tonight, Stanford couldn't stop Oregon's run game. Well, Michael James ran for 257 and three touchdowns. And a lot of time up there with Chip Kelly and the Ducks. And after sitting down and watching some of their cut ups, they're like a human shred machine. I mean, some of the running lanes, some of the things that they do offensively, I've never knew existed. And then you pick up this Auburn offense and you look at them, those statistics are real. That's 49 points a game, 43 for Auburn, 500 yards a game. We might be there all night. Yeah, that's right. Over, <laughs> over a thousand yards. I mean, this is going to be incredible. Do not miss this game. Yeah. If you love offense, yeah. stay tuned to that one. Well, that timeout at that moment. Jim Harbaugh decides to take out Andrew Luck. So Andrew Luck comes out of the game. Alex Lucas, the junior out of Illinois, comes in. 
He was there in the pre luck days at one start in 2008. And he hands off, so Andrew Luck's night is done. Stanford fans hope uh, his Cardinal career is not done. Well, he's got a career in football. We just don't know where it's going to be. He is one outstanding football player, quarterback, human being. Well, you know, Ron, he's played two years at Stanford, and it's been the top two offenses in Stanford history. And he's got a lot to do with that. 40 points a game this year. This guy's a phenomenal talent. I, I've never met a guy quite like him for as young as he is either. Yeah, that's a good point. David Green, got a punt here again. Listen, Jim, you're a We'll get delay game whistle with 222 to go. First possession of the half where Stanford did not score a touchdown. You know, guys, I think Jim Harbaugh is going to end up in the NFL with his brother. This is just a, a guess on my part, just kind of reading the tea leaves and listening to the noise and talking to the people on the sideline before the game. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks there. Just if I had a gut, if I had a gut, I think Jack Harbaugh, who was a great coach at Western Kentucky, his his dad might see both of his sons as NFL head coaches next year. John getting Baltimore ready for the playoff game against Kansas City on Wild Card Weekend. Down to the 11, 2, 10 to go. And the view from our direct TV ultimate picture cam has been a view that Virginia Tech fans will see in, uh, in their nightmares here. Andrew Luck with an outstanding game. Boy, just look at those mechanics. You know, I know I'm a little whack job, John. You always give me a hard time, but I, I believe consistent quarterbacking is about proper mechanics proper fundamentals as we've studied Andrew Luck this week I think he's got it all you said it earlier when you look at those intangibles a plus and that goes a long long way and you're gonna deal with the ups and downs of weeks months and years in the National Football League to the victor deserves all the headlines and the plot it's Tyrod Taylor completes to Danny Cole Taylor has stood in there and uh, yep. taken a lot of hits and continue to come back here for more. He ends his Virginia Tech career as the all-time winning quarterback in Hokie history, 34 and 8 for Frank Pete. And he'll be playing on Sundays down the road, Mike. This is a special young man as well. Throw the football, smart, intelligent, needs coverages, good at the line of scrimmage. Getting every yard possible out of the 34-yard line. How about his size, Jaws? 6'1". Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, you can say that about Drew Brees, too. There's always going to be some questions about that. But I think, it, once again, when you look at him, he has those intangibles as well. You know, he spent time with them. He's an outstanding young man. You, you talk to his coaches, his teammates, uh, the people at Virginia Tech University, you know, the quality of person that he is. He hates to lose. I mean, this guy's a fierce competitor, you know, and... You, know, you look at the success of Tim Tebow and Michael Vick as these mobile quarterbacks that can still throw the football. I think you look at Taylor as a guy that fits that mold. Thank Scoves you, guys. On. Yep. Thomas bringing him down, John. Chase Thomas, number 44, and Shane Scove, number 11. Remember those names. Let me tell you. Wow. Those two guys play as hard as any two young men playing college football. I mean, it's 40 to 12, and they are still playing just like they started this football game. Final minute. Taylor tucking and taking off. And down shy of the 30. I remind you to stay tuned for the Ford BCS postgame show as soon as we're done. Postgame analysis. The Orange Bowl trophy presentation of Stanford and a reminder you can log on to bcstailgate.com for your chance to win the ultimate tailgate F-150. Ford BCS postgame show just seconds away here. Throw to David Wilson as a first down. Logan Thomas will likely be the first man to get the quarterback opportunity for Virginia Tech. For the 2011 season, who knows what the situation is going to be at Stanford? Head coach, quarterback, anything else? But their moment to celebrate and enjoy 
They have not won one of the major bowls since winning the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day 1972. And Jack Harbaugh is going to help be the setup man for his son's Gatorade back. Yeah, they got him. They trapped him. It's one of the great turnarounds in college football. Four years ago, 1-11. and 11. Now 12 wins for the first time in the top five. A Stanford football season for the ages. Tyrod Taylor's outstanding career in Blacksburg comes to a close. Yeah. Very often times we hear guys talk about as future number one draft pick in the NFL touted when you get to a bowl game. Teams have had weeks to prepare for him. And the player plays an A. Not Andrew Luck, not tonight. He was sensational. And here's Michelle Tafoy. Wow, what a scene down here. Jim Harbaugh, congratulations. A 12 and 1 season. You got yeah. lifted there. Uh, coming off the field, what did that feel like? That, that, that was great. That was great. Uh, all the play, just, per, credit goes to our players. Shane Scove right here. Talk to him. Talk to him and Andrew. Great job defensively. I, I'm good. I, all right. I'm going to. Okay. Well, he's he's left. Shane Scove, and we'll get to Andrew Luck in just a minute. What a game for you guys. I, you, you knew you had a tough job ahead of you. Talk about the effort of this defense. Well, I mean, we knew that they had some talented guys with running backs. They had stable running backs at all. Going to be playing in the NFL someday. Um, Tyrod's amazing. So we knew that the key to the game was just hustling on the ball. One guy might miss a sack, but we just had to keep flying down, and uh, we'd take care of one another. That's the way it's been all season. Congratulations, Shane. We're going to walk over here, and we're going to find Andrew. Andrew Luck, who's uh, right in here in the midst of this camera fiasco. <laughs> Andrew, what a game. Uh, you talked about it beforehand, how emotional it would be to cap off the season the way you did. Yeah. What, what are your feelings right now? Uh, extremely excited. Couldn't be happier for you know Stanford community, the fans, the players, the guys that have gone through you know some pretty rough times at the university football wise. Uh, just extremely excited. What's going to stand out about this effort? I mean, everybody played well. Well, I think the uh, second half. You know, coming out in the second half and, and establishing a rhythm. We made some mistakes, and, and, and Virginia Tech made us make mistakes in the first half, but came out, showed a little fortitude, and, and get the win. In the second half would be special. I remember that uh, your coaches said the offensive line just needs to give you one extra second so you feel comfortable back there. How comfortable were you? I uh, extremely comfortable. With second and half I, I would I would not want to play behind any other line ever they're, they're great guys they're, they're wonderful people and I'm, I'm proud and humble to be to play, to play behind them and you are a humble guy and you've been putting off talking about your future how long are you going to savor this before you start deciding and what's going to go into your decision Andrew about whether yeah. to stay at Stanford well, I think a lot of things you know I don't want to make an impulsive decision I'll I'll enjoy this for as long as I can I know the the deadline's coming up so I'll sit down with my parents and, and go over go over a list of pros and cons and go from there and, and if Harbaugh stays or goes, how much does that impo impact your decision? It'll definitely be an impact, uh, but but I don't know how much, to, to be honest. Andrew, congratulations. Best of luck. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle's 40 time is pretty impressive, too. She's the one who got to Andrew Luck, Virginia Tech's defense pick. Stanford Cardinal, champion of the, the Ford Discover BCS postgame show is brought to you by the new 2011 Ford F-150. Built Ford Tough.